What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Mosen here with MTA 33 I believe and the topics um, Actually, we're gonna answer some comments of the last MTAs and then we're gonna go into um, You know what made the game great? Oh, made it great again tier 2 before patch 1.4 and uh, cute dog. And that's gonna be the topics for this one. And I'll fire out um, 34 as well because you've been waiting. Or maybe you haven't been waiting. Maybe I'm just. I just want to believe that, which is more likely. But you know, I've been uh, underway for a couple of days, so I couldn't really get anything out. And um, so now I'm back. Got to work later, but um, you know how 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 things are. It's been very busy. Let me tell you one thing. You're in your late 20s, you can't party like you were 18 anymore. You need two days to 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 recoup, at least one, and then there's one day that's a little bit uh, not so productive. And if you combine that uh, with having to work, it's hell. Don't do it anymore. Only party hard if you have the next day free. Mm -hmm. That's a free tip for you here. You probably know that already. I just had to learn. Um, right. Uh, let's go into the first topic. And it comes from Radek Horacek. Hope it's correctly uh, pronounced. He says, and this was regarding um, Dimor release, trading, loot, in classic WoW. So, like these two big topics. And he is saying um, this. All the points you are uh, you make are good, completely agree. Still, loot trade is a much greater issue. Anyway, I saw and commented on your loot trading video. Sub now. Great job. Keep it up. Thank you very much. We have to fight for classic. Blizzard is making good, a good job, but they still should realize if they go with shit like loot trading, they will lose the community and we will go to private service again because they don't have this... Um, bad crappy systems and uh, are free after all. So, um, right, so while I agree with this in the essence, let's say, uh, Radek, I think, you know, like, I think there's a lot of people, like me, I will never go back to private servers. And uh, this is because, uh, you know, I've been... I, I always said Blizzard should um, put out classic servers and um, if they would put out the classic servers then I would definitely play it and I would pay for it because I don't want to play on uh, private servers anymore. And I know there's a lot of people that um, would never ever go back to private realms. There's a couple of us that have played 3 by now, you know. I've started on Rebirth and I've played on... Um, Nostalgias. I played on like one or two before that, that were uh, well, just very small. But um, then, yeah, Lightbringer, and now I'm even you know playing for fun on Northdale because there's nothing. It's still taking so long until the servers are coming out. So I personally wouldn't go back to private servers if they fuck this up too hard. I would just not play it to be honest and move on to another game. And um, I think that's fair too, like you, you as a customer have the right to just say, well, this is not what I signed up for, this is not what I want. This is also the best thing you can do. It's better than going somewhere and, um, you know, saying how shit everything is. It doesn't matter to them, really. What matters to them is the money, right? You cancel your sub, they're gonna get a little bit more, uh, give you a little bit more of, uh, attention. And if enough people do that and uh, decide to not give the, the funds to the company anymore for the product they delivered, this is the, the right way to do it and say, hey, this is not what we signed up for. You said classic. And you can write, like when you're canceling your sub, you can uh, you can have you have a box, you can write in there and take the time to do that. Uh, write in there, hey, there's too many changes for, um, you know, this wasn't supposed to be in classic. But if, like, but this is my personal view, okay? I know there's a lot of people that say they will not play if there's loot trading and encharting, and I will play. I said I'll give this a chance, I want to have classic for fuck's sake after five, seven, eight years where people have been going in, in private realms and there were people selling gold and rank 14 characters, you know, all that garbage. I just want the, the, the classic servers, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm not gonna... This is also an attitude thing, I think, you know? I don't want to have sharding in, I don't want to have loot trading in, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep loot trading in. I'm gonna get, uh, go into those points later too, 
Um, you know, and this is just, yeah, we have to fight for it. We have to make ourselves heard that you don't want to have it. Um, I just don't, you know, I'm not going to let them ruin the fun for me with th these two things. But that's just me personally, right? Um, I don't want it in the game. Absolutely not. I, I, you know, I, that's why I'm making videos about this, talking about it. That, because I just hope that enough people get that um, they we need to make ourselves heard about this, this uh, topic. And um, in the end, if it's in, this won't keep me from playing. Me personally. But I know it will keep... A lot of people from playing. Um, so yeah, this is just my personal view on this. Uh, I absolutely agree with you with um, with everything, basically, right? And then in the, in the end, it's your choice if you want to try it out, give it a shot or not. If there was an LFR in in the game, that's the point where I would not play it. For example, so you have like an idea where the the line is for me, and it's different for everybody else. But uh, thank you for the comment, and um, yeah, I think we agree on most, right? Um, so let's get into this one. I thought, I thought this one was funny, and I didn't want to read this before. Okay, we're just gonna go through this. I'm gonna. I, I mean, if you if you um, want to read the whole thing, okay, um, go to uh, Reddit and then uh, slash classic wow. Uh, after playing Classic for a bit, I realized what made the game so enjoyable to me and ultimately what drove me away. Okay, so this is an interesting post. Um, so it comes in from Jersey SE 410. And he is saying, after playing Classic for a bit in the past few days and leveling a few different classes, it all kind of clicked and I realized what made WoW enjoyable for me and ultimately what killed my enjoyment of WoW as well. Uh, first of all, the RPG aspect, he says. When I was leveling my warrior, I realized that uh, I enjoyed having to go to Under City and Thunder Bluff to learn new weapon skills. I felt like my character was growing, and I could directly upgrade my character even at low level. Oh, I got a new two-hand sword, but I can't use it. Why? Oh, I don't have a weapon skill. Go to Orgrimmar, talk to God, find the weapon master, find out how to get to UC back in the day. The traveling that was, you know, a thing. And, um... Uh, right, so additionally leveling warriors are painful, so I usually level um, blacksmith and mining along the way, so I can make my own gear and sharpening stones, etc. I'm wearing gear that I made um, that is directly helpful for me leveling along the way. Uh, the RPG feeling felt like it was directly part of the world and not something to be phased out as an afterthought. Uh, speaking of phasing again, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think this is one of the, the big parts. Um, a leveling a profession, by, by the way, a really good leveling tip. Uh, leveling your professions as you go and as you're playing. I'm just going to move my character in the background, you can't see it. Uh, but uh, move it to the auction house and uh, get those pesky green hills of Th Stranglethorn pages together. Um, this is, uh, you know, he's absolutely right. You had to, um, you know, you'll find, you'll find a sword, yeah. And uh, you'll uh, try to try to uh, wear the wear the weapon, but you can't. And then you have to go to to a town. And while that might seem annoying to some people at first, which I can absolutely understand too, but this is what makes it cool. You know, you can then uh, do I just sell it maybe on the auction house in the nearest town, or do I go all the way to under city? How do I get there? What am I doing? Right? Am I am I learning it? If I do, then I have a big upgrade. And it was like an what he's saying this was more of an RPG style, and you would had, you'd have like small, you know, had long-term goals and small things that were happening every day that uh, were achievements, right? It was just cool for you. So like, also leveling, uh, blacksmithing, and mining along the way, and of course it would take you longer to level up. But not everyone's in the mood for um, I need four days to sixty, otherwise I suck at the game. Right, some people just want to enjoy that, and it's very comforting and very interesting and very fun to craft your own gear with your blacksmithing profession. Then you wear it, and then you have an upgrade, and then you level. Um, especially as a warrior, he's kind of right about that. Uh, then he goes on to say how the world feels since the release of Cataclysm. Now this is interesting because I actually stopped in Cataclysm. 
uh, for the first time for a longer period. Uh, when I was leveling during Classic, I knew where I was. I knew where I had to go. I had spent literally thousands of hours in Kalimbor and the Eastern Kingdoms. It was almost my second home for nearly a decade. Deathwing and Cataclysm broke all that. The world, uh, the world felt alien to me. Uh, I felt like a total stranger in a house that had been home to me for a long period of time. Even going back to Orgrimmar during Classic was a relief almost... almost. I felt like I had been gone for years and finally come back home. I nearly cheered up running around and realizing where the bank and thrall used to be. It's another reason I hated Worlds of Draenor so much. I was so excited to go back to Outland and I felt almost betrayed when I came into Worlds of Draenor world of Drenna, and realized that this was not the old land where I had ventured into the lairs of Gruul MacTheridan. It was not where I faced down Illidan and cleared the Black Temple. It wasn't home to me. Um, right, so basically the world had changed. Wallets of Drenner, yeah. I kind of like the idea that you see how places looked before or how they will look later. And I always have like this thing of um, Western and Eastern Plaguelands. Yeah, maybe with content patches, you know, they can add something to Tyr's hand, like a cleaned up zone or some, like a cleaned up part of the Eastern Plaguelands with a, with a Scarlet Monastery raid and Tyr's hand. Oh, that would be awesome. And this is always like seeing a little bit, getting a glimpse of how it could have looked or something that's very interesting to me personally. So I liked the Wallace of Drama um, world. I didn't, I, I also li kind of like the Cataclysm world. But I get what he's saying, but this is like a, you know, this is nothing that um, relates to the game being good or bad. I think this is just a thing that of people either like changes in the game or they don't like changes in the game. They can adapt to changes rather easy, easily or, or, or harder. The main principle is always, you know, change is, nothing is as constant as change, basically, and Things are changing, and the better you can adopt it, or adapt to it, um, the better for you. Because as you can see, things are changing quite a bit. And um, But I understand the point, right, that um, the things didn't look the way they were. And uh, to be honest, they, they actually changed the whole game, so I'm very happy they're going to bring this back to um, you know, classic servers, that the old, old world is going to be a huge selling point for a lot of... Uh, players that are currently on uh, BFA. I, I, I get the point. Um, feeling of community and players out in the world. Um, whenever I logged in after the LFR, LFD, CRZ. What's CRZ? Maybe somebody can let me know what CRZ is. Cross. I, just, I'm, I was happy because I enjoyed leveling uh, via dungeons and heroic dungeons were my jam. I could tank or heal heroic dungeon on my warrior or pally all day long. I needed to. I could play with and interact with people from other servers that I had never met before. <clears throat> you know, this is actually an interesting one. Um, is that he likes this. It's, it's interesting. Okay, that came with a price. People did not really communicate anymore. I did not matter. It did not matter if you were a dick in Dungeons or Raids, the odds were you would never meet that person ever again. I felt like a person in a crowded room of people I would never see again after the end of the night, instead of a person at a con where I knew two thirds of the people in the room somewhat acquainted for the other one third. True. Uh, yeah, that, this is basically the LFR uh, argument and of course he's right. right? It's, this killed a lot for a lot of people. I know, I know uh, you know, for example, I told Biscuit actually quit because of the LFR. That was like nerf again, like content nerf HP wise and LFR introduction. And that's where a lot of people quit. I, I, I just don't understand how this can be still in the game. Um, you know, with so many people absolutely hating, hating it. But apparently this is a... Uh, the thing that will stay in. Um, and we can't really change very much about that either. Um, I don't want to go through all of this, but there's a lot more to read about. Like the re release of Mists of Pandaria is also what, what kept me away ultimately. And the game, you know, stopped being a long term progression, is what I said, because you know, it was about, um, you know, 
upping your item level. Today I upped my item level by one, right? And I'm looking at this number and what the item really means doesn't matter to me anymore. Uh, server classifications, okay, that's a small thing for me. But basically he is, um, yeah, he's uh, saying, you know, basically the, the points, that, the same points that drove me away, there's a couple more. But it's really cool to, um, you know, to read through this and there's a lot of, uh, replies, so I wanted to highlight this and go through it a little bit without it taking too long, but uh, Jersey SE410 brought this one in 13 hours ago, speaking from right now, and it's worth a read, definitely, right? So, um, um, I try to um, get this into the MTA in a read out form. If you want to have more of this stuff, then I can of course read everything out, um, but that's up to you. Um, right, he's talking about heirlooms, uh, but you can give this a read. I went through the most important points and uh, basically Mr. Pandaria and the short-term uh, direction of the game ultimately made him stop playing. So let me know what you, uh, what, 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 you know, what kept you from playing or logging back in, because for me it was definitely uh, LFR and uh, Mr. Pandaria I absolutely hated. I leveled up, I quit. I, 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 I didn't like the vibe, I didn't like the style. And um, I tried every expansion, but, you know, LFR, Cataclysm, Pandaria is where it started to just be unplayable for me. Absolutely bad. And I don't know why. And yeah, heirlooms, kills leveling, everything's true, he says. Give it a read. Then we're gonna drop into a, a little smaller topic, because uh, it's getting pretty long here. And it comes in from Germs2. Germs2 says, Tier 2 dropping from MC before patch 1.4 and uh, what he's uh, saying is um, Hi, I was reading through the earliest patch notes released and noticed that up until patch 1.4 the tier 2 set used to drop from Molten Core along with tier 1. I found this really interesting and wanted to look into some more but into it some more, but information about the loot tables from around the time is pretty sparse. Does anyone know which MC bosses dropped what pieces of tier 2, how the sets compared to each other at the time, etc. To quote the WoW Wiki article from patch 1.4, uh, prior to this patch, Molten Core boss creatures could drop in items from one of the two different tiered sets for every character class. The loot tables have been changed so Molten Core bosses will now only drop items from the lower tier class sets. However, some of the items from those sets were not previously dropping in MC. These missing class set items will now drop in Molten Core, allowing players to complete their lower tier class sets. The higher tier class set pieces that once dropped in Molten Core will be found once again in Blackroom there. The next raiding zones are a little bit. And then we have, of course, the picture, picture of the uh, old <laughs> tier 2. And as you can see, it looks um, well, rather interesting. Now, the thing that I very, uh, very much found interesting was: Did Tier Two really drop from MC? Now, I'm not talking about head uh, pants from Ragnaros and head from Onyxia. Is that what they mean by that? Because that's all I remember. But I'm, but I've, I've, I'm very sure I heard. Um. Things not dropping that you know they didn't use to drop in in, in 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 MC or am I completely wrong here? Because maybe we have some really old school players that can still remember if tier two and tier one dropped an MC apart from the pants from Ragnaros because that would be interesting. I actually want to go and check that out right now. I mean, you can th the sets look. Oh my goodness! I mean, priest looks okay. And yeah, that's about it. My god, Warrior. I remember having these sets when everyone was about... Uh, yeah, let's uh, have the old sets in, because that's how it looked like. Right? No thanks. <laughs> in this regard, really, no thanks. But let's go uh, WoW Wiki article. Mm, or maybe we should type in Tier 2. Not scroll down. Mm. Maybe it will take too long. I'll just see if... Oh, there's a lot of changes here. But, okay. Items. 
here came the art update. Okay, yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, Onyxia will once again drop two upper tier class set helms. Yes. Everything received new items in the loot tables. Most of the non-class set items that dropped them from Molten Kingdom have had their effective levels increased. Crazy. Um, an additional epic item per kill, so... It, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just imagine having one epic drop from the, uh, from the, from the builds. Um, could drop... Creatures could drop items from one of the, the two different tiered sets. Every character class... Okay, so it really was like that. So they could either drop tier 1 or tier 2. If anyone has more insight in this, it would very much be interesting to pick up in the next one. Um, so they could either drop tier 1 or tier 2, I guess. That's what they mean with, with this. Well, that's interesting. If Please let me know if you know how that worked before this. How it actually worked. Um, and then they changed it to only drop tier 1, I guess. Anyway, interesting. Uh, we're gonna um, stop with this MTA right here, and then we will actually move on to the next one, which I'm gonna upload for you as well. Uh, I have been Wuzen, I thank you very much for watching, and um, excuse the break in the daily content. It's more thought of an almost daily, but I think you know that by now. Thank you very much for watching, I'm not gonna drag this on for too long now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.